Welcome to Fate Servant Wars, a show where we compare two similar servants and attempt to discover which is better. If only it could be that simple. After looking at both servants, you vote in the comments which servant of the two you think is the superior heroic spirit, and I'll give my verdict too. Now here is episode one. Former Kataro is easily the best regularly available, free-to-play, area-of-effect assassin in Fate's Grand Order. But when your competition's the Phantom, that's not hard. Former farms enemy riders and berserkers with his quick noble phantasm, Immortal Chaos Brigade, which can do solid damage post-interlude. He can access it through his own solid NP game, which can be further bolstered by his critical damage potential, something he himself creates with his excellent star generation, which is undoubtedly the centerpiece of his kit. Boasting a triple quick deck in addition to a quick noble phantasm, Former has phenomenal star generation potential, underlined by his presence concealment A plus passive. Each of his quick command cards has healthy star generation, coming with four hits apiece. The same can be said for his extra attack as well. Even his Noble Phantasm, Immortal Chaos Brigade, itself generates a good number of stars. Better still, he can further buff his star generation by up to 50% for one turn through his Ninjutsu A++ skill, which can also be used on an ally. Beyond his Noble Phantasm, it is this star generation that makes Fuma more than an asset for any team allowing for good team-wide critical damage and improved NP gauge generation as well. He also has some semblance of support functions. The aforementioned Ninjutsu skill additionally provides a one-turn evade to his target, while his sabotage and suspicious shadow skills lower enemies' attack and critical rate and debuff resistance, respectively. Finally, Immortal Chaos Brigade inflicts a post-damage 20% defensive debuff onto all enemies, in addition to its overcharge effect, hitting opponents with Confusion, which is a chance-based skill seal that has a chance to activate over the course of 5 turns. However, he does have problems. His NP damage is relatively poor prior to his interlude, and this interlude is only unlocked after completing Pseudo Singularity 3 Shimosa. This is quite late in the game relative to other interludes, making his NP weak for a long time beforehand. Furthermore, like many assassins, his overall damage is fairly unimpressive, and he lacks any form of offensive steroid within his kit. So while he can generate stars, Fuma is far from the best to actually make use of them. Despite Immortal Chaos Brigade being area of effect, Fuma really is more of a star generator as opposed to a farmer, which is useful in its own right, but may see him under threat if there's someone that can do both. FGO's 24th and newest Sabre Face is on the scene. Just don't remind her of that fact. Grey is a four-star assassin accompanied by her trusty, albeit uncouth, sidekick, Ad. 
Her entire kit revolves around using her powerful AoE Noble Phantasm, Rongo Minions, to annihilate waves of Rider and Berserker enemies. It can do considerable damage when buffed by her first two skills, Anti-Spirit Combat Rank B and Mystic Code Seal Release Rank C, both of which are solid offensive steroids. The first is Anti-Spirit Combat Rank B, which boosts Gray's attack by up to 30% for 3 turns, additionally providing a 50-100% to buff against undead enemies. While this trait is not the most common, it is situationally useful nonetheless. Her second, more powerful buff is Mystic Code Seal Release Rank C, which increases Buster and Quick damage by up to 40% for one turn. Together, they considerably bolster her Buster Noble Phantasm's damage, which once she is at MP5, something relatively straightforward to accomplish given her Welfare Servant status, allows Rongo Miniard to do excellent damage. Furthermore, the overcharge effect of Rongo Miniard is to reduce all enemies' resistance to Buster and Quick attacks by between 20 to 40% for three turns, making them all more vulnerable. This is especially pertinent to Grey, whose kit's foundation is built on these two card types. Both steroids are also useful in buffing her non-NP damage, which itself is solid owing to her high base attack in addition to these buffs. This particularly applies to her single buster card and three quick command cards, and it is through this deck composition that her second key strength emerges, that of a star generator. While not quite on Fulmer's level, she generates more than a healthy number, with solid hit counts on her three quick command cards, as well as good production from her extra attack. Unlike Fuma, however, she possesses a good critical strength passive, Independent Action, rank A+, making her a worthy candidate to make use of these stars, especially when her skill buffs are active. These potential critical hits are also useful for helping to generate her MP gauge, and this is essential, as Rongo Miniard is by far the most important part of her kit as a farming assassin. For this purpose, her third skill, Protection of World's End Rank B, provides a flat 20% battery, while her other notable passive, King's Image Rank A, improves her NP gain by 10%, allowing for potentially great NP generation from her Soul Arts card. Her kit is rounded out with some modicum of protection, namely a debuff resist on Protection of World's End, and one hit of Invincible on Mystic Code Seal Release. However, like all servants, Grey has her issues. Her triple quick deck, while good for star generation, prevents her incorporating Rongo Miniard into a Buster Brave chain, as she only has one Buster command card, limiting its damage output. Furthermore, this deck only leaves her with a single Arts card, which can lead to difficulties charging her NP gauge. Although her quick cards and critical damage potential, in addition to her NP battery, does somewhat mitigate this. The other issue concerns her skills. Her second and third skills offer only one turn benefits, leaving downtime in between. This can be an issue in longer battles, although given her farming niche, this really is only a minor issue. And finally, and unlike Fuma, these skills are integral to her niche, making leveling them up vital to her success. But unfortunately, many of the materials required rank among the most annoying to collect. Evil Bones, Ghost Lanterns, and Void's Dust among them. Thank you, Barbados. Ray is a solid area of effect farming assassin, with a good noble phantasm that can be buffed through multiple offensive steroids. Furthermore, being an event welfare servant, she's very easy to get to NP5, maximizing her damage potential. Better still, a combination of these buffs, high base damage, and critical damage potential makes her a fairly well-rounded damage dealer, especially for an assassin. On top of her NP, she is also an impressive star generator, despite issues with her deck composition. So now it's time to vote, so pause the video and in the comments write down which of the two servants do you deem the winner. Now your criteria can vary, it can be just as a farming assassin, 
Maybe you want to incorporate both roles as a farming assassin and their critical star generation potential. Given that they can both generate stars, it really is up to you to say in the comments who wins, and once you're done, I'll give my verdict. Well, the winner is... The Assassin AoE farming niche is a fairly poor one. Up to now, the only three to play options have been Fuma, and someone really not worth talking about. And to that end, I can say with complete certainty that Grey is the far superior farmer. Wrong Dominia does much better damage than Immortal Chaos Brigade, and her kit, which contains both steroids and an NP battery, makes her a far more suitable farmer, even against enemies that have higher health. Furthermore, even though she's a 4-star, she is a welfare servant, and thus easy to get to NP5. Now as a star generator, Fuma is slightly better, but he does lack the damage to do anything with them. Grey, however, is a 2-in-1 option. She not only generates stars, if not quite to the same degree as Fuma, but she can also use them, especially when her buffs are active. Overall, both are good options. The area of effect farming assassin niche is small, so both can and likely will be featured if there aren't higher rarity alternatives available, and both do bring much to the table. But when side by side, the clear winner is Grey. I've been Seenjus, thank you so much for watching this episode of Fate Servant Wars. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe, and remember, stay tuned for next time. I've been Seenjus, and thank you for watching.